Hey, Coach, how are you doing this morning? I'm doing great. How are you doing? Good, good, good. Um, you know, you've obviously been on one side of, of this series before. What do you think it's going to be like to, to be on the other sideline? Well, you know, that's been a question I've been asked. I don't really know. I've never been an opponent in, in this stadium as a player or a coach. So I'm sure it's going to be exciting. I know both, uh, both teams have been in great preparation for the game. Um, I know the fan base at East Carolina very well. They'll be excited and energized. And uh, I know our players are looking forward to it. I know Coach Houston has that group looking forward to it. So it'll be exciting. Looking forward to the competitive uh, to start next Friday. But, I mean, next Saturday. But we need the rest of the week to keep keep practicing. Do you expect it to be technical? Hang on, guys. I'm sorry. I need to do one thing from Ari. That's all right. Okay, carry on. Go ahead, y'all. Do you, do you expect it to be kind of an um, emotional homecoming for you, or, or are you just going to be sort of in game mode? Well, um, you know, I didn't, didn't know. Uh, I, I last year when uh, I was able to be inducted to the Hall of Fame there was my first time going back, and uh, the question was asked then. And um, I thought it was uh, – I didn't know how I would feel, but it felt, it felt, it felt good to be back. Uh, Doing now, doing competition time. Like I said, I've never been in this arena. Uh, I've always been the, either the player or the coach. So uh, I'm sure to be emotional, uh, but then to get straight to get the competition part. Uh, Steven, go ahead, please. Coach, uh, great to see you again, man. Hey, man, uh, man. Uh, you know, if I, if I remember correctly, you were the first coach to, to ever offer Holton Aylers. And I just – just am curious, you know, how much have you kept up with him over the years, followed his career, and obviously his fifth year, uh, just just your thoughts on his career to this point. Uh, I, I had no – I had no doubt. Uh, I offered him as a ninth grader. And um, I remember going to the school and, and then having a chance to go through the coach at that time. But uh, – and so did Coach Doran. We both had the same deal, but I knew he'd be a great, great leader. Uh, he was already a great athlete in baseball and basketball as well, and as well as football. So uh, now watching him develop and then being able to watch him on film, uh, I know he and Devin went to the same quarterback school this summer. Uh, it, I have no doubt that he would be leading and, and uh, uh, be a great ambassador for the team and the university. Jonas Pope. Good morning, Coach. How are you? Hey, Jonas. How you doing? I'm doing well. Um, I know. I know when you left ECU, obviously you wanted to to leave on your own terms. Um, but over time, has 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 time kind of healed? Uh, how much that maybe kind of hurt when you had when you were let go in 2015? Was there ever any any resentment, or has that kind of like faded away over time? Uh, never any. Uh, you got to admit, uh, disappointment, uh, hurt. It was a, my alma mater, my, my family, Erlene Masters, my brother. Everybody knows the story. My brother graduated from there, sister-in-law, brother, brother-in-law, my nieces. Uh, that part was tough. Made a lot of friends and family. Uh, so it was tough. I mean, I'm, I'm only human with that. And, uh, but no, uh, uh, never, never any negative words from my part. Things happen in this business. I've been in a long time, but to say it didn't bother me, yes. But the the pain uh, or anything like that is 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 nothing but wishing them well. I know Coach Houston extremely well. Known him a long time. Uh, back to the LR days, James Madison days, and the staff. I have some of my guys on that staff uh, as well. Uh, Donica Patrick and, and and Chip Weaver. Those guys on my staff. I know most of the guys. So. Uh, you know, uh, it, it's a, it was a challenging time in my life, uh, but that's what life is. You got to learn to deal with it, and, and then uh, how you handle them is, I think, most important. David Richmond from the Sports Objective. Hey, Coach. Good to see you again. Same here, uh, David. <clears throat> just want to talk to you. I know there's a lot of Pirate Nation that's uh, trying to get used to you being in the in, uh, 
the, the red and white. Um, but I wanted to ask you as far as uh, speaking of NC State uh, with a top 15 program, uh, can you talk about the Wolfpack and uh, the expectations this year? Well, uh, you know, we have an experienced team, but so does Mike. Uh, they have, what, 16 returning starters, I think, last count, and, and a lot of transfer guys that came in. We have used that, too. I guess that's the way of the world. So we both have experienced teams. Uh, I think our, our group, with the experience, what we try to do is, is use it in a positive way and, and also present to our team these are things that will hurt if we don't do them. So it's been a two-pronged deal. This is what we have to do to be successful. And this will this what we if we do this, we will not be successful. So the experience helps that way. Uh, the expectations are, are are great to have. I think I've been a part of teams where no expectation was there, and teams in my coaching career that had expectations. I like the latter. Uh, and I think that now what comes with that is knowing how to handle it. And these guys understand preparation is key. Uh, they understand daily focus is key. Uh, they understand that we got to, what we call our one more and stack days, getting into, uh, getting ready for competition. So uh, this group has done a great job from off season to summer to fall camp. And now we're right in the game week now. So uh, I think that's what helps this team. They learn to keep things and handle the day. Don't look forward. Don't look back. Just handle the day. And that's like today. That's what we're doing now. Thank you, Coach. I guess they have to put their big boy pants on, right, Coach? As you always say. <laughs> well, everybody's got to put big boy pants on and big boy <laughs> pads. It's a big boy day. It'll be a big boy game. <laughs> uh, Patrick Johnson. Hey, Coach Ruff. Hey, Patrick. Uh, I remember your first game coaching in Dowdy Ficklin, the Hail Mary. It was the Sunday before Labor Day uh, against Tulsa. That has to be something that stands out. Uh, there was the uh, UNC game with all the points scored. Uh, so I imagine as a coach, those games stand out. Could you maybe speak to some of the other memories as a coach? And then is there a particular moment or two that stands out when you played inside of Dottie Ficklin? Well, um, as a coach, uh, a player, it was, it was great. I was learning. I had a great teammates. Pat Dye, Hall of Fame coach, was our coach. And we had great team unit and success then. But as a as a coach, that first game you mentioned, Patrick, was big because it was a, my second stint as a head coach. I had son, served the interim at Texas Tech before then, but that was a big, 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 big day. Um, uh, you know, another day was when Justin Hardy broke broke the record for receiving receptions. I thought that was that was great. And then the last day, uh, any time I had to, those seniors had to leave, and it was our last game in Dowdy Ficklin, it was tough, but it was very memorable to me. It was very special to me. Each group, uh, that hug, that final hug of uh, leading them leading them to, to the next stage in their life, like going from a lamb to a ram, uh, ne the next part of them. So those are uh, things that come to mind quick. Uh, next up, Eric Gollickson. Hi, Coach. Hey. Um, just curious, uh, you, you mentioned the familiarity. Mike Houston and, and Coach Doran kind of talked about familiarity and, and how, you know, Coach uses you to be his, you know, eyes and ears from a different perspective, I guess. You know, how much does that familiarity play in as you guys are preparing for game week here? Well, it comes with every opponent every week, uh, every practice, really. Uh, I'm always watching. I observe everyone, coaches and players, and that helps. As far as uh, what Coach Houston does or what Donnie does, it, you know, everybody, they do a great job. The reason they, that they're going to do a great job there and they have, and he's done a great job in the past, is they know how to develop. I think the first word that comes to mind is development. Development of players, development of systems, development of schemes and programs. So we know they'll be prepared. We know how, uh, I know, we've seen how Coach Houston works and operates and runs a program. So I have no doubt that uh, he, he'll have the whole entire group prepared. And then DK and I have known each other all our life. DK, Donnie Kirkpatrick, from when he was, when I was a high school coach and he was an assistant at Appalachian State. That's many years ago. Shoot, older than you guys talking on this nerd thing here. 
That's a long time ago. You little pee jabbers, y'all pee jabbers when I first met <laughs> Donnie. Miss Annabelle, Miss Annabelle's punching me in my rib right now. I don't use bad like it's not a bad word. But uh, so I've known Donnie a long time. He'll tell you the same thing, and I respect him as a man, as a coach, and great offensive coordinator. And then Trip Weaver was a was a young coach on our staff. I know he's doing a great job in the back end, as well as some other staff, Blake at defense coordinator, a lot of those guys. So I know Coach uh, uh, Houston has the group ready to go, and and uh, Coach Dorn has the same philosophy of development and and with and player led programs. So I know Coach Dorn and I spoke a lot about the Hebrews with respect they have for one another. That is legitimate and true. Jonas, do you have another one? Yeah, I do. Coach, I, I know since you've been at State, um, like pregame, you used to come out pretty early and you, you kind of take your seat and kind of observe. Now, going back to Greenville, you come out extra early and kind of taking it down effectively from, from a different perspective now that you're on the visiting sideline to kind of take it all in and meet and greet people. I know that handshake and hug lines will be extra long when you come out in the tunnel for the first time on, on next Saturday. Yeah, I, I, I'm anxious just to really find out. I, I, I don't know how uh, it'll be exactly. Uh, the boys here are used to me coming out early. So if I'm not out early, the boys here, they'll, they'll wonder what's happening. So I got to make sure I'm in spot so they can see me and I can give them a hug and a word of encouragement here. Um, I, I'm hoping the, uh, the the fans will be somewhat friendly. I know they'll be a little bit uh, weighed in there who they're pulling for for the game. But uh, I look for positiveness from the fans. Uh, they'll receive nothing but positiveness from me. Uh, I'm not sure about the hug before the game. Um, they might be a <laughs> some, uh, uh, but I'm sure it'll be uh, all in fun, all in spirit, and in the in the spirit of the game. Brian Bailey, hey coach, following up on that, you uh, you got me unmuted. You got music? You got me. You got me now. Yeah, I can hear you. All right, all right. just following up on that. When you put the uniform on, you played on that very turf that, that we're, you know, you're playing on. How do you control your emotions, even if you're out there early? I mean, you're walking around and you know what it's like on that side. Now you know what it's like on this side. I mean, that's got to be an emotional roller coaster right there. Well, you know, it's the first time I was thinking about when Annabelle had set everything up for the day. I know the question would be, could predict the question might be how would it feel? And I went back over 43 years of coaching. I don't remember, remember, uh, well, I do remember a little, but as a player and a coach at one institution, and now as a coach, coaching against that has never happened before. So it, 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 uh, the, the, the emotion will be different. Uh, I know I have, like you said, BB played on that turf and, and also coached on that turf. So I'm sure there'll be some emotional uh, feelings there. You know, uh, I was 17 years old the first time I played on that thing. So that was many moons ago. And uh, so I'm looking forward to that. Uh, and then I'll be able to tell you how it feels once I step on that. I've never had an opportunity to ever have that comparison and, and, and that mutual uh, competition or feelings that I'll have next Saturday. Hey, Brian, Brian, I'm Ray. sorry. I'm not seeing Ray's hand on my oh, that's screen okay. here. Al, you don't even have to raise your hand. You can ask anytime Man. you want. Okay, well, I've got three questions, so I hope we're, nobody's in a hurry. But, <coughs> Ruff, Ruff, you made a tackle at State to end the game, win the game. And what are the details on that? Well, we got – I think Johnny Evans threw for about 5,000 yards in that game against us as a secondary. And uh, I just haven't been in the right place at the right time. Uh, I was in our, my first start, our first start, our first game of the season. And it was, uh, I was glad to be in the right spot and able to play because I think Coach Die, if I remember, even still got after us that next day on about giving up so many yards against Johnny Evans. And I see Johnny from time to time right now. So I know he's, he brings that up a little bit, but it was, uh, 
it was very emotional being the first time, first starter, first start ever in my career as a sophomore. And, um, uh, but it was, uh, but I also knew we had a lot of work to do after that game, but it was glad to have the chance to be a part of it. What year was that, Ruff? 1977. Okay. Um, I know you came back to North Carolina because of your dad. I don't know how he's doing, but what can you tell us about that? Well, I did. It was um, uh, really right after uh, when I was at Virginia, coach at Virginia with Coach Mendenhall. My dad uh, was diagnosed and came down an episode with Alzheimer's and dementia. And we began that action, what comes along with that then. Uh, right after that, Lincoln got the job at Oklahoma and Lincoln Riley and called and I had turned it down four times because of what just was going on with my dad. And, you know, the family said, hey, you know, it's an opportunity to go help Lincoln and be a part and help him get off to a great start as a head coach. So I did that. And then about after the third year, I think after that playoff game, we played LSU in the Peach Bowl and we had a good team. I, I over the that after the bowl game came home and a lot of work was put on my my brother. Uh, my brother was handling all of it by himself. And um, you know, I felt like it as a as one of the sons, the oldest sons, that it was my time to come back and do my part and help and be a, be there for him. Uh, we're going to see him tomorrow. Our coach is giving us off on Saturday tomorrow as a staff and a team. So I'm going down to Lumberton to check in on him tomorrow. So uh, he's hanging in there. He'll be fired up. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing him. Al. Coach, what are your game day responsibilities? One is support for the team. Uh, the coaches as well. They know I've been in a lot of battles. Uh, the coaches as well, the players. But support also in watching the game. My eyes are there to help Dave. Uh, so I watch the game as in such that manner uh, from all three sides of the football. Uh, and then whatever adjustments I see, Dave and I will talk at halftime and then come back again in the same field, support, observation eyes mainly out during the game. And, and uh, so I'm used to doing that as a – coordinator and head coach and I watch anyway uh, observing so that that's my main duties will you be on the sideline yes okay. be on the sideline all right thank you rough yes sir and David Thompson all right um this is your third year here now with with NC State and coach Dorn how has that relationship um you know grown and transformed in, in the last few years Man, you know Dave and I and this been documented that I met Dave when he was 23, 24 years old back in 98, 99, back in Southern Cal. And I was at Fresno State and we've been close since then. And um, there's a, a love and a friendship and a mentorship, all those combined in one. I consider Dave and Sarah and the boys family. And uh, my dad is family to Dave and I consider his 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 dad family to me and he considers Erlene and my girls family. So that's a tight relationship. Uh, he is boss. So I know that pretty clearly. So he, I call him boss, not Dave. Well, sometimes Dave, most time boss. And, uh, but it's a great relationship. You know, we, we have so much correlation between our families, our histories and in, in coaching. And then with his dad and my dad having similar and going through similar experiences, um, it's a constant communication. It's a it's a, a love uh, that you really can't measure. I've known him, you know, most of his entire adult life, and um, he I, I know has been documented as well. During some challenging times in my career, the first phone call I get and had had got and get or has gotten have gotten is with some Dave. I mean, you can't you can't make that up. And, and the next challenge and each challenging experience, the, the first call I get was from Dave. Uh, again, you can't plan that. And, uh, and it's not, it's not, it's, it's, and it's a call of, are you good? Do you need anything? And, and uh, of course, we tell each other we love each other and all that. But, but uh, yeah, so our relationship is, 
is uh, now working together for three years. It just, it, it, we've been opponents for, for years. We've been opponents on different sidelines. But even then, we were friends and communicating and communicados. And, but the um, last three years have been uh, special. And Jonas, go ahead. Coach, I'm just curious, um, because you spent so much time in, in Greenville as a player and as a coach, is there a certain place that you that you miss about this in the town that you look forward to maybe sneaking off to next weekend or even maybe, maybe even just driving by and, and seeing it? It's going to spark up some <laughs> good memories. There's some good barbecue places. I don't mind going by getting a sandwich or something over there. Uh, no, I'll, I'll be put at the hotel and and uh, that's also a good seafood place down by my boat, Little Washington. I might sneak off down there and me and Tom might, might have a little time out together, but uh, no. It'll be strictly business and hotel only with the team and and team times and team functions. But there's some good sandwich spots I could divvy by. And last question, uh, Brett Kennedy, go ahead. Uh, Coach, just being on the other side of things now, going into Dowdy Ficklin, uh, now preparing for the crowd noise when you had the crowd noise on your side for all those years. What's it like being on the other side now, trying to prepare for those Rowdy Pirate fans, which I know you know all too well are, are tough to plan for. So you saying they're not going to be pulling for me on Saturdays? <laughs> you, really, you think they're all going to be pulling? Uh, yeah, well, you know, I know exactly what the uh, – that's one of the, the strong parts and uh, memor, memor, uh, very memory parts about, about coaching. I was asked a question earlier uh, about memory. But I know they'll be excited and, and uh, have a lot of energy um, and ready to go. Uh, and I know this one time they won't be pulling for 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 their hometown or home former player to win. Uh, so uh, I'm looking forward to to that. I'm looking forward to the competition. I know Coach Houston. I've already mentioned a bunch. Respect for all he does. I've known him so long and. Uh, We'll look, our kids are preparing and trying to do the best we can to be ready to, 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 to be prepared for a great, great battle and, and competition and, and, and on next Saturday. So I know the fans will be ready to go. I think we're good. Coach Ruff, thank you very much. Media, thank everybody for calling in. If you guys need anything, just let us know from our end. Thank you, guys. See you guys.